Whenever we're throwing dry flies, we're throwing a mergers anyway. So we might as well take advantage of all the cues that the trout are looking for. I'll tell you what I mean in just a second. Yes! I'm out here. Yes! My legs are still work. <laughs> Love a trout. Yeah! <laughs> Your 20 incher. On a, dry. on a dry. Hey everybody, welcome to Familiar Waters and FWFishing.com. I'm Mike Pulaski. Today I'm going to show you how to tie a bug I call the arrested development. This is a bug I tie for PMDs. Summer is almost here, which means PMDs in a lot of places across the West and sulfurs back east. The first bug I grab when I have a hatch going on is an emerger, unless I know for a fact that they're eating spinners. And so if you're throwing mayflies, you want to throw in a merger, this is a great one for you, the arrested development. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe, give us a thumbs up, hit that like button down below, and please leave us a comment. We would love to hear from you and what you want to see, anything that you're thinking about, any kind of trout fishing or other type of fishing that we can bring to you. Let's hit the vise, arrested development. It's a great emerger for PMDs. So for this bug, we are using a TMCO 2487 size 14. Uh, it's two extra short, uh, two extra wide, which I like. I like that wide gape. Uh, great bug. It's a great nymph bug, too. Uh, but there are several different manufacturers that make hooks that would work for this. This is just what I'm using for this bug today because what I started with. I'm going to wrap on 70 denier UTC for our thread. You see that right there? And just trap it, tie it back just a little bit down the bend we don't want to go all the way back we don't want to be super deep right we want a nice small nymph body underneath but we're creating two different bugs here i've talked about this before that when you're tying emergers and let's be honest every dry fly we throw is an emerger that you want to have the nymph body underneath and the dry fly the done emerging bug up on top and so i'm going to take Coque de Leon for the tail, like you would on you know, a lot of nymphs that are out there. And I'm going to tie in three or four, just something to look buggy, give it that impression of a tail. And I'll pull them to size. That looks about right. And perspective, right? You think about tails and abdomens and thoraxes and all that stuff on these bugs. You know, they're all kind of in thirds. That head section up where the leg starts about a third, the abdomen's about a third, the thorax about a third. You know, it's all tails are about a third of the bug. So give yourself some good perspective on this bug and build in those natural elements, the tapers and the, the size differentiations uh, so that it looks natural to trout. Next, I'm going to take pheasant tail. I love pheasant tail. It has caught a ton of trout over the course of the years. And so I love using pheasant tail in my bugs. I'm gonna take about four strands, pull that off, and then tie the tips in up top. Wrap that down. Remember when you get down to the bottom, you don't wanna be so tight on it that you're crushing the barbule or the center of this because you want to have a little bit of looseness so it can spin around the hook. Next, I'm going to tie in my copper thread, and I tie this after I tie in the pheasant tail so it doesn't get kind of weird and kinky as you wrap around. That first pheasant tail wrap is going to wrap this down and lock it down. And so I tie it in, A, to make the pheasant tail a little more durable. B, adding a little bit, of, just a touch of weight back there is okay because you want this nymph section to sink. And so then I'll Put a single half hitch on there and save my work to that point. Then when I do my pheasant tail, I like doing it with a hackle plier. I know a lot of guys do it by hand. Maybe it's my football days, but not quite as steady as I used to be. And so hackle pliers make this way easier for me. And then putting my thread in the thread west also makes it easier. So I have room on the hook to kind of get after it. See, I did that already. Broke out a couple of those pheasant tail fibers. So not too heavy, 
wrapping this on, we want a nice delicate body still. Right, it's still supposed to look like a natural nymph. Go ahead and build that up, taper it out. I'm going to wrap this pretty far forward. Come forward and then block it off. out of there, throw a half hitch in, save my work, and then take that copper wire, and now we're just going to rib this on the way up, and what that's going to do is add durability, add just a touch of weight back here, add a little bit of flash, kind of give you that trigger point effect without being too bulky, without adding too much extra kind of oomph to this bug. A little bit of copper wire goes a long way. Wrap that up, tie it off. Now here's where the fun part and the magic of this bug comes in. We're going to tie in Semperfly straggle string. You can see this isn't that copper brown, so it's gonna be brighter. It's gonna have that shine to it like a nymph husk up top. I'm gonna tie this in coming off the back. When you look at a nymph under the water, and I'll put a picture up, as these bugs emerge, you can see that the front part where it's all cracked out gets that gas bubble in it, and you still have the legs hanging off the nymph. I thought that this straggle string does a great job of imitating that look in a bug. And you could do this with a dubbing loop too, where you make a loose dubbing loop that then has hairs hanging off of it. But the straggle string has a lot of flash and a little bit of thickness to its fibers, and so it looks fantastic. Next, I'm going to tie in CDC. Now this is where we start getting into that light color of the PMD. So the CDC is gonna come back and I'm gonna tie it up as a post here coming off the back, looking like the wings. Pull that into position where I want it. And these wings can be a little longer than we oftentimes tie them and give them credit for as it comes out of the back of this nymph. Tie it in there. And you can actually post it up a little bit if you want to. Okay, don't get it all together and kind of neat and organized. Excellent. Don't be scared about manhandling your materials to kind of get them where you want them to be. Sometimes guys will tie things in and then they'll just kind of leave it when it wasn't perfect. If it's not perfect, I'm going to move it with my hands. I'm going to manhandle it. I'm going to kind of get things going to where it looks like I want this bug to look when I'm done with it. So I've got that coming off the back. I'm going to tie in one more set. I'm going to put another set of CDC wings in on this side. Tie it, pull it, manipulate it, get it to where you want it, lengthwise. And then post that up together. So you got a good bunch of CDC back there for that wing material. See how they explain a little bit like that? I like that. That's the look I want. Okay. Put that off. I'm going to take some Semperfly Predator fiber and I'm going to create a post off the front here. This is going to be the front part of that bug coming up out of the water. The head, remember the wings sweep back, the legs come off the side. This is that head coming up out of the water. 
And so that's what this is going to be all about up front. Turn the excess. Tie this back so it's almost straight up coming off right here. I want to leave a little bit of room up by my eye so that I can get my finishing wraps in there and I'm also going to tie this straggle string forward. So you'll see that in just a second. Next I'm going to take a PMD or cream hackle, neck hackle, good hackle in there uh, in that size 14, 16, whatever you're tying for for this bug and I'm going to hackle this post that we just tied in. So first let me post that up. Give myself a little post to wrap around for the hackle here. Need a super thick full hackle. You need enough hackle to keep this floating oriented so that those wings are actually back and down on the water. So I'll put that hackle, let it up against the shank, one wrap in front, one wrap behind, another wrap in front, and keep this separated. The thing about these synthetic fibers is they can get unruly, so don't let them get away from you. Clip off that hackle, and we're good to go. So next, I'm going to make sure that I keep my thread on the back side of this post, and I'll show you why in just a second here, but I can hang it off that knob on the back of my vise. And I'm going to hackle this post now. About three or four good turns ought to be enough. You got to keep good tension on it, as you can see. Keep it down against that post base. And you can pull this forward. That's why you leave a little extra length on this post. You can pull it forward to get it away from that CDC in the back. Wrap that over. So then I'm going to pull that post forward and I'm going to wrap around and underneath the base of that hackle that I just tied in to lock this off. So again, remember I said this is like the film critic meets the X Caddis, right? We're now going to take this hackle that we just tied off, first let's take the straggle string and we're going to use it to push this post forward just a little bit with a couple wraps, so now that wing's sticking straight up, we get a wrap or two underneath that hackle and a wrap in front of that hackle, and so that gives you the good impression of legs and it gives you that good flash up front and the good body underneath. Put that out. I would keep that parachute post here so you can pull it back when you want to whip finish at the end here. Grab your whip finishing tool. Pull that 
post back. Little five turn whip finish. My plug is done. So clip off the thread, clip off your post. So this bug has all the cues. It has the wing coming out the back. It's gonna lay heavy on the water, but you can still see it as an angler. It's got legs up front with the light body coming out of a dark nymph. Those are all the things that happen when emergers are on the water, when they're popping, when they're trapped in the meniscus. And so when trout see that, they know that insect is struggling. They know it's an easy grab and you can get those leisurely sips with trout coming up and just whacking them hard. And I've seen trout that have otherwise turned down dry flies with standard hackles and even parachute hackles come up and absolutely nailed this bug, the arrested development.